Now, the top story tonight is President Biden's Build Back Better infrastructure proposal will be funded in part through tax increases, drawing predictable opposition from the moderate Democratic wing of the Republican Party. Axios has been interviewing moderate Democratic House members. Several are skeptical about Biden's tax and spend plans, and some were willing to say so on the record. Look, in their defense, taxes are extremely high compared to our hunter-gatherer ancestors, but they are the lowest since Americans' primary source of nutrition stopped being berries. Margaret, do we want a world where the wealthy lose precious percentiles of their income just so poor people can drive to their third job without needing to jump a collapsed bridge? Obviously not. No, obviously not. Look, I mean, nobody, I think if you took a poll of average Americans, do they want infrastructure passed? You're going to get overwhelming majorities, very popular amongst Republicans, very popular amongst Democrats. The issue is always how to pay for it. And it's not an issue or a question, frankly, many of us have been asking ourselves over the course of the last year in the midst of an economic depre depression onset by a pandemic that was out of our control. But it does have to be paid for. Yeah, I mean, I am really genuinely concerned about corporations struggling during this pandemic. I heard that the other day Bezos had to hold his own dick to take a piss. Hold on. The more government takes action, the less we're in an interesting historical period characterized by marauding bands of penniless freak beasts. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I got to say, before we raise corporate taxes, keep in mind a lot of good people run companies. I hung with Jack Dorsey and Chet Hanks last night. Good guys. Oh, buddy, if I only had a time machine with a gonad-seeking boxing glove. Now, as Congress considers gun control legislation, Republicans like Lindsey Graham are saying new laws could violate their constitutional right to macho hero action film star fantasies. I own an AR-15. If there's a natural disaster uh, in South Carolina where the cops can't protect my neighborhood, my house will be the last one that the gang will come to because I can defend myself. Now, Margaret, should South Carolina voters be a little thrown that their senator anticipates that the moment it starts raining, they'll tear him limb from limb? Actually, so many Americans really feel that if, if it weren't for their guns, they wouldn't be able to keep their families safe. And so that's just, I think, what we have to understand is the starting point of any conversation about gun control. Well, it's good to see that, like any responsible senator, Graham's first response to a natural disaster requiring immediate federal aid would be to mow down his constituents. Graham's right. The only defense is firing an AR-15, leaving the perpetrators in hysterics at the sight of the kickback and induced Lindsey Graham-shaped hole in the wall. Now, Republicans in Georgia have passed new restrictive voting laws aimed at tackling the emerging spree of reckless participation. Governor Brian Kemp brushed off accusations that the law had a racial bias while signing under a painting of probably a completely Democratic plantation. Now, one provision bans providing food and water to those in line because according to studies, the severely dehydrated and delirious are more likely to vote Republican. Margaret, will this law finally root out people who purely see voting as their meal ticket? <laughs> finally, finally. Look, what you should know about the law is that poll workers are allowed to provide water and water is allowed to be provided to people who are in line. But this was a really terribly written, poor, poor optics. Doesn't look good, isn't the raw I would have written, but isn't quite as draconian as everybody is painting it out to be. Well, there are some little fun tidbits in it. This law includes owner's voter ID requirements for all mail-in ballots, which disproportionately affects black voters. Of the voting age citizens without current government issued ID, 25% are black, 8% are white. Sounds suspicious, which according to the Georgia legislature means it must be true. Now, the consequences of that no food or water vision will be devastating. It's only a matter of time before a candidate wins just because his name is Big Tasty Turkey Leg. Margaret, you wanted to jump in there? No, look, I just, I think it's important to look at the voter ID laws in Georgia. And if you look at voter ID actually was reorganized in this election and individuals who showed up at the polls were required to have IDs, but voting expanded. And in the case of Georgia this year, you didn't see uh, a diminishment of, of uh people of color voting because of those laws. That's right. People don't give Jim Crow laws enough credit for inspiring the civil rights movement. Now, a giant container ship called the Ever Given is finally moving through the Suez Canal, but not before holding up global trade for nearly a week. This brings us to a recurring segment, the world is stupid and it makes no f***ing sense. Well, folks, it turns out the world has a few kinks, and if you give me a second, I will figure out how to make it work properly. You just this through here, you know. James, are you okay? Uh, boats, planes, cars, Austin, ocean. what's oh. shit like in person? Kind of demanding, you know. Thing. He did a trial run Aren't, of White I mean, Boy Summer on Just Me, uh, White Boy Winter. It was way more rules. Fascinating. Of... Nope, we're screwed. I'm, I'm sorry, I tried. You know, I've long suspected that boats weren't as dependable as we pretend they are. I still think they're lying about not having long, skinny legs that walk along the ocean floor.